my friends, you know what we're going to do right now. Sit back, relax, because we are <laughs> going around the world, around the world with Rebecca. That's me. We're going around the world, around the world with her. It's true. And you're going to see how alike and different we are when we travel to countries near and far. So come along, come along. Let's go around the world, around the world with Rebecca. Hello, friends. Welcome to Around the World with Miss Rebecca with the Shaler North Hills Library. That's Miss Ingrid. Hi. I love this. my new favorite show. She is the musical producer and the show producer of the Around the World. Show. You know, I do want to make an announcement. Right now I'm working on a post that's going to go on your Around the World page at the very top that talks about how when we read about these countries, we often say, like, the people in Ethiopia, if we're talking about Ethiopia, or the people of Japan. But Miss Rebecca and I, we know that you can't make generalizations like that about any place. Yeah. Like, you can't say, like, no, because no two Americans are the same. And no two Ethiopians are the same, and no two Italians are the same. So we just want you to remember that, too. Yeah, yeah. it's just around the world with Miss Rebecca is an overview of the It's world. an overview, it is. And my friends, what's so, what I hope to achieve with around the world with Miss Rebecca is, is as always, okay. we are here. Yep. Right around the Pittsburgh area. Yeah, we are. But you see with this map. We are not it. No. Everybody else is in mm -hmm. the world, too. From corner to like, corner. Yeah, it feels like sometimes that it's just us and just the people we know or maybe even the people we see on TV or something. But it's so much more than that. Yeah. We're a global community and we're all humans. And we all love and are, get happy and sad and get hungry and we sleep. You know, we're just all over the place. So mm -hmm. it's pretty cool to take a little overview of, of where all those places are and what maybe some of other those folks' customs are, you know, right. from where they they're at like you know around Pittsburgh we are aware that some people uh wave what is referred to as a terrible towel yes that is that true. is not something that happens you know um you know well, maybe that isn't a good example dude because you know what I've been all around this country and most of the time I've seen terrible towels well, and yes, but perhaps so if you are in Kazakhstan, yeah, they they may not wave a terrible towel. They may do something else for do you think presumably a... their soccer team. Right, probably yes, their soccer team. Just everybody's got something different going on, but we're still yeah. so much alike. Yeah. So that's the point. Okay, my friends, before we travel to Ethiopia today, let's. Travel back in time to where we've already been. Here we go. We have been to Guatemala. Yep. That was last week. We have been right? to Peru. Yep. We have been to Ireland. Yep. We have been to Nigeria. Yep. We have been to Iraq. We have been to Pakistan. We have been to Japan. That One, is just two, crazy. Three, four, five, six, seven. So we have traveled to seven different places. And look, they're everywhere. It's crazy. It's and crazy. today, my friends, we will be traveling to Ethiopia. Ethiopia. It's very exciting. Are we ready for... There we are. Ethiopia, Ethiopia. My friends. And as with all of our other countries, we're sticking with the same 
series of books from countries, countries we from come which we from. come. It reads countries yeah. we come from. It does. And this is by Spencer Brinker. Now, Miss Ingrid, can you explain why you said something other than what it reads as? Well, because it's not really grammatically correct to say countries we come from. And grammatically, like, worldwide grammar rules? Well, if you're going to use English, and it is written in English. So, that's the I thing. wonder if it was originally written in English. I don't know. Well, did you know that Ethiopia... The, the one of their main languages, they have their own alphabet? Yep. That's so crazy. Are we going to learn about that? We're going to give a brief overview of it. I'm excited. This has been a very interesting country. Because I get so excited about this. When I find out what country you're doing, I try to find out think cool things about it, she too. She gets very excited. Could I really get into this? Very excited. Yeah. Hardcore. Dude, I do. My friends. We've got our table of contents, as you know. Let's us know what's inside the book. This is Ethiopia. It's breathtaking, friendly, colorful. Ethiopia is a large country in Africa. It's about as big as Texas and California put together. Whoa! We live in the United States, and Texas and California are gigando states. Yeah. There, see? Boop. And then there's California and Texas. Yeah, and they're big. More than 100 million people live in Ethiopia. Ethiopia has many different types of land. There are mountains, deserts, and forests. Desert? forest. Ethiopia's Great Rift Valley has huge dry plateaus. A rift is a large crack or split in the earth. Amazing animals live in Ethiopia. Rare Ethiopian wolves roam the mountains. Walia ibex live on steep cliffs. This reminds me of our friend we met in Pakistan. Dude, yeah, that one was so... What was that? Markhorn? Mar Markhorn? Yeah, yeah. Furry geladas munch on the mountain grass. <laughs> Are they not the coolest looking things? <laughs> a gelada is a type of monkey. Geladas have a patch of bright red skin on their chests. Okay, so that's not a why. shirt. Because it kind of looks like a soccer <laughs> shirt. Sorry. Well, some animals wear clothes. Well, okay, their owners make them wear clothes, which is a whole different ethical issue. Addis Ababa is the capital of Ethiopia. It's also the country's largest city. More than three million people live there. The name Addis Ababa means new flower. Ethiopia has worked hard for its freedom. Twice the country has fought wars to keep its independence. In 1916, a woman named Zuditu became Ethiopia's ruler. She was the country's first woman leader in hundreds of years. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Each year on March 2nd, Ethiopians celebrate their freedom. Many languages are spoken in Ethiopia. Amharic is the most common. This is how you say hello to friends in Amharic. Salam. Salam. This is how you say hello to teachers and other adults. Tena yistilin. Oromo is another language spoken in Ethiopia. Several of Ethiopia's languages use the Je'ez alphabet. It's one of the oldest alphabets still in use. Je'ez letters can be found on many ancient artifacts. This is an old stone carving. I wonder how old, old the alphabet is. I yeah, guess I'm going backwards that it says it's one of the oldest alphabets still in use. Yeah. How old is it? Modern signs in Ethiopia are also written in jazz. So English and jazz. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. Because I read that English is taught in all the schools, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
hungry. Ethiopian food is delicious. Meat stews called wat are served with vegetables. The food is arranged on a flat, spongy bread called injera. Injera wat. Ethiopians use injera to scoop up their food. Yum. Dude, I've had Ethiopian food. It is unbelievably good, dude. You have been raving about it dude, all week, missing. Dude, it, it is. I mean, I had it in D.C. It is incredible. I've never had it. Oh. After a big meal, it's time for a coffee ceremony. Coffee beans are roasted, ground, and boiled in front of guests. The oldest person gets the first cup. These are roasting coffee beans. Salt is sometimes added to Ethiopian coffee instead of sugar. Mm. Now, while I make that face, I don't drink coffee personally. Yeah, me neither. But it doesn't seem like something that would mix with salt. Yeah, I don't know. But I really don't know. I I think, though, anything could improve coffee. It just seems so gross. I, I'm not a fan. Yeah. I prefer tea. But you know what? When we when we said we were going around the world and going to Ethiopia, the first thing Kara said was they have great coffee. Many Ethiopians are farmers. They grow coffee, yeah. corn, and sugar cane. Ethiopian coffee is famous around the world. <gasps> And even in Taylor. Some Ethiopian farmers grow colorful flowers. What time is it? In Ethiopia, time is based on when the sun rises and sets. There are 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of nighttime. Ethiopian time is organized differently than standard time. For example, our 7 a.m. is called 1 in the day in Ethiopia. Dude. And I don't know if the next page is going to say this, but do you know there's 13 months in Ethiopia? No. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's really interesting. It's pretty cool. Yeah. What sport is popular in Ethiopia? Running. Ethiopian runners are known for their speed and stamina. Many have won Olympic gold medals. What else is a popular sport in I Ethiopia? I wonder. Soccer, Soccer. my friends. Fast facts. Capital city, Addis Ababa. Population of Ethiopia, more than 100 million. Main languages, Amharic, Oromo, Somali, and Tigrinya. Money, Burr. Major religions, Christianity and Islam. Neighboring countries, Eritrea, Sudan, Kenya, Somalia, and Djibouti. Dude, one of the other countries we talked so about. Somalia, Kenya. R spoke Djibouti too, I think. Eritrea. Oh, here's Djibouti. That's yeah. so tiny. Yeah. Sudan. South Sudan. Cool fact. The remains of an early human were discovered in Ethiopia in 1974. The famous bones are about 3.2 million years old. The oldest ones. And they named her Lucy. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, we're here. Oldest bones from 3.2 million years ago found here. So, some people call Ethiopia and that part of Africa, the Horn of Africa, the Cradle of Humanity. Some people, but then there's other th things that say, like, there's a bunch of different cradles, but that is where the first hu humanoid or hominoid remains were found, the oldest ones. Interesting. So crazy. My friends, let's review the glossary as yeah. we always do. Ancient means from a long time ago. Capital, the city where a country's government is based. I think we do that one every week. A ceremony is an event that marks a special occasion, like a graduation or a birthday party. Independence, the state of being free from control by others. Plateaus, areas of high, flat land. Stamina, remember the runner, fast with a lot of stamina. The strength and energy to do something over a long period of time. Oh, Miss Rebecca, I, f I remembered one other cool thing. One other cool thing. Please share. Okay, Ethiopia 
is one of only two countries. Remember how we talked about all these countries being colonized? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, one of only two countries in Africa that were never colonized. Well, oh, so maybe it fought for freedom. It fought from for a freedom. Or um, the Italians invaded it. When they celebrate their independence, that was when they, they like, the Italians were trying to take them over, and that was like a huge victory. And they were like, no. No, thank you. Yeah, nothing. We're good. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good. good. We're fine. We're good. Isn't that crazy? It is interesting. It's pretty wild. Well, my friends, let's learn a little bit more about Ethiopia. We'll drill down as the grown ups. Drilling say. down. Desserts. Deserts. Oh, yeah. You know how you can. My friend, Miss Lynn, taught me how to do that, how to tell the difference between spelling desserts and desert. Here's how you do it. And I didn't learn this until I was like 40. Desserts, you always want more than one. And so there's two S's and deserts. One's Spe good. Speaking of deserts, my friends, um, and actually speaking of desserts, one of my favorite desserts is ice cream. And I don't know if you know out there, my friends, but uh, for summer reading at the Shaler North Hills Library this year, our theme is ice cream. Scoop up a good book. Yeah. And we will have some ice cream trucks visiting us this summer. So when you cruise by to come in and select your books or maybe pick them up from the pickup window downstairs if coming inside isn't your thing, uh, you can also sign up for summer reading and our weekly raffles. Dude, that's cool. It'll be a good time. Yeah. Yep. And you can win cash or gift cards yep, depending on how old cards. you are. You know what? There won't be a store here, but there'll be a store where you can use your cash, cash or gift card. With whatever you want. Yep. yep. Okay. I just thought desserts, my mind automatically goes to ice cream. Wonderful. Well, and some cakes and cookies and all sorts of things. But I'm very excited for ice cream trucks. Deserts. And deserts. Which, oh my gosh, imagine a desert and how much you'd want ice cream. And a good book. Yeah. Deserts by Emily K. Green. Look at it. it. Table of Contents. Deserts are the driest places on earth. Very little rain falls in the desert. The ground and the air are dry in the desert. When rain does fall, the water evaporates quickly. Is that a real picture? I think so. I think it is. That's crazy. Not all deserts are hot though, my friends. Some deserts are very cold. Antarctica is the largest, driest, and coldest desert on earth. Ice covers Antarctica all year. Most deserts are hot. The Sahara Desert in Africa is the largest hot desert on Earth. Rocks and sand cover most of the Sahara Desert. Is that the desert in Ethiopia? I'm not sure. I don't know. It may be. Huh. We'll find that out. That's a good question. Yeah. I don't know why I'm looking for it to just say, oh, wait, here's the Libyan desert. Ah, oh, so there's like different deserts. As you look at the back of my head, I'm just waiting for it to jump out at me. Do you know there are sand dunes in Colorado? I did not. I went are to them. Are they around a lake? Or no, like they're not. Them? It's sand dunes, Great Sand Dunes National Park. Miss Jill and I went there. And it's just right in the middle of the mountains. There's these giant sand dunes. It's crazy. I can't remember why the, how they formed there. Okay, I can't see it. Okay. The sun shines down on a hot desert during the day. There are few clouds to block the heat of the sun. Most desert animals hide during the day to stay cool. Hot deserts can be cold at night, though. There are few clouds to trap the daytime he heat near the ground. Many desert animals look for food at night. Dry winds blow across deserts. The wind blows sand into hills called dunes. Over time, wind wears away rock. Blowing sand made this arch in the rock. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Wind and sand shape these rocks. A gust of wind can make a small tornado called a dust devil. 
Water lies deep under the ground in some deserts. A place where the water comes to the surface is called an oasis. Desert animals drink water at an oasis. People can find water at an oasis. Midnight at the oasis. There used to be a record store called there was. Oasis. On McKnight Road, was there one down south too? Yeah. No I didn't way. Know about it in McKnight Road. Yeah. Wow. Near my dentist. <laughs> Desert plants go for weeks without water. A burst of rain falls at last. The plants bloom and make seeds. The rain oh, brings yeah. new life to the desert. Let's go over the glossary, my friends. Antarctica, the continent that covers the South Pole. It is the largest, driest, and coldest desert on Earth. Dude, I never thought deserts were this interesting. Antarctica. This is super interesting. I thought they were more interesting when I learned that Antarctica is a desert. It's a desert. You know, what makes a desert a desert? Yeah. It's not just hot and dry, it's dry. Yeah. Arch, a curved shape with a hole under the curve. There's an arch. There's. Dunes, a shape that sand makes when it is blown by the wind. Dust devil, a small tornado in a desert or other hot, dry place. Evaporate, to change from a liquid into a gas. Oasis, a place in the desert where water comes up from the underground streams. Sahara Desert, the largest hot desert on Earth. Wait, is the Sahara Desert in Africa at all? Or was I just making an assumption? Like maybe, what's the desert in the United States? Oh, I don't know. It's over there. Hmm. Let's look. See, this is what we like to... I don't think the Sahara is in the United States. No, it's not in the United States. I think... I can't remember what... You asked what there. desert was there. Hmm. Wait, isn't it where Palm Springs... Is that a desert? Palm Springs is... In... Florida? Florida. Oh, something's maybe here. maybe California. Something's here that you drive. No, from this is California. the Mojave Desert. Uh, That's what it is. If you drive, one time I drove from Los Angeles to Las Vegas and you cross the Mojave Desert. I remember that. You know what? I, I, don't, I don't know. And I, I can say, friends, I'm comfortable saying I don't know because when you don't know something, it's best to say you don't know. Oh, dude, yeah, totally. No, but that's, then, then yeah. you just you find it out. You could find it out. Dude, I love this show. This is my favorite show in the whole world. This is where I went one time. You went to Johannesburg? I did. I spent two weeks there. I don't think I knew that. Yeah. 1995. Because one of the librarians who used to be a children's librarian here, her husband got transferred to Johannesburg. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. That's the only international trip I've ever taken. I mean, I've been to Canada, but... I went to Canada. Yeah. I went to Canada on a school trip. Yeah. Well, my friends... That is a super teeny weeny overview of Ethiopia. Dude, and it was so Ethiopia's cool. Landscape, my friends. And, you know, if you think, think Ethiopia sounds interesting or, or another country we visited or some other country anywhere in this wonderful earth of ours that we must take care of, you know, learn about it. Yeah. Because you too can go around the world, my friends. Oh, Miss Rebecca, I want to put uh, um, friends at home and Miss Rebecca, I want to put a little video that I found of a kid and her typical day going to school and doing all the cool things that she does in Ethiopia. That sounds awesome. Yeah. <gasps> thanks, Miss Rebecca. I love this girl. I love this class. Hey, thank you, friends, for spending some time with us. You know what? What? We went around the world, around the world with Rebecca. We certainly did. We went around the world, around the world with her. And it was fun and it was free and it was cool. We went around the world, around the world with Rebecca. See you next week for Russia.